Thanks so much to Tyler Ford. And now it's time for Signe Coleman. I'm here with Signe Coleman, Emmy nominee, Soap Opera Digest Award winner, on and on and on. I remember you from 80s guest appearances before I ever saw you on, oh my on a gosh, soap. Yeah. Um, and some Huey Lewis videos, I believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Heart and soul, and I want a new try. Yes, you, you made those videos. Um, Thank you. But now you're the co-executive producer and star of a new web series coming mm -hmm. out, River Ridge. How did you get involved with the project? I was actually approached by um, a mutual friend of Tyler and, uh, and mine, and uh, I guess Tyler had known my work and knew my work and asked if she could make an introduction, and she did. And from the moment that Tyler and I met, um, you have those certain people in your life where something just clicks and you feel like that you've known them your whole life and Tyler and I started talking he actually had to be at another appointment and we were just you know, just back and forth back and forth and this friend was trying to pull him away and said we gotta go we gotta go and he said I'll call you and I said please do because um, I really identified with his vision of creating something that is really socially conscious um, in you know in the temperature of this you know of our of our world and society today of really wanting to try not only to entertain and entertain as he had mentioned uh, before but to educate people to unify people to show people that they are not alone in their day-to-day -day struggles whether it's um, economic um, you know personal love relationships um, struggling with addiction struggling with you know, whatever it is that to try and create um, this series that people can tune into and identify with and say, wow, I, I, I'm not alone in my feeling and my struggles. And to create through the storyline some sort of resolution that people can find a way to, to get help or resolve something. And I, I'm sort of jumping all over the place, but to really make a social difference. Right. I, I think TV's kind of become, as society, more politically correct over the years. Mm -hmm. Like, I think a show like All in the Family wouldn't necessarily even be, make the air today because they kind of put things out there, and then they showed both sides of it, but they put things out there, and people related to it. Maybe it was one side or the other. And um, I, I think TV has changed, and I think what's great about the web is people can actually get those kind of stories out there without having to be censored by a network or somebody telling them that you're not politically correct enough. Exactly, exactly. Um, because there's, you know, we live in a, in a world that has a lot of pain and suffering. And if you can create something that somebody can watch and identify with, and what we had talked about as well is having at the end of each show a hotline right. pertaining to a variety of different, whether it's mental illness, child abuse, drug addiction, whatever it is, that there's a start, there's a way that you can make that first phone call, get connected with people, uh, something that's going to help you take that first step to improving the quality of your life and changing something, getting into a solution when there's a problem that maybe we can in some small way make a difference. Well, I mean, I've heard stories from actors over the years that played characters with issues and, and you played a character who was blind on Young and the Restless. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get letters or hear from people that oh, that was, that was really one of the most powerful characters that I ever played because of the fan mail and the identification with, uh, with Hope Adams Newman. That she sort of became a poster child, not only for people who have lived with, my character in particular had retinitis, retinitis pigmentosa, which is a degenerative disease. Um, but that have lived in, um, you know, dealing with that. Um, so it was not only fan mail from people who had loved ones, siblings, um, spouses, children that were blind, but people that dealt with a number of other issues. And that the fan mail that I got, that to create a character that was strong, independent, that was not reveling in self-pity, that just had such a faith and belief in in herself and just moving forward and doing the best that you can under any circumstances um, it was just amazing the mail that I got I still do well, I still get I, well you still have made appearances as a ghost over time mm -hmm. um, so you know firsthand as well as anybody the impact the entertainment can have on people and I, it's great that you guys want to invest in, in that because I, I do think you can tell those types of stories and be entertaining at the same time. I agree, I agree.
So, so what can you tell us about your character without revealing too much or giving anything away? What can you tell us about this character in River Ridge? She's a very pragmatic, very mm -hmm. down to earth, very realistic. She's sort of a, an earth mother. She is connected to just about everybody in the, in the town that she's, she's lived there her whole life. Her life really revolves around her community and uh, her friendships and relationships and community. Um, and is very, very, I think, very good at sort of compartmentalizing her own interpersonal struggles. And that's going to shift mm -hmm. <laughs> dramatically. The doors are going to get blown off of that. Um, but she's very strong, very loving, very kind, hardworking. Um, but all of, as I said, all of those sort of deep-seated se issues and emotions that have not really been allowed to be, uh, uh, you know, to come up have been, as I said, very comp compartmentalized, I think have really started to take a toll on the character. Now on the show, Julie Pinson plays your sister. Mm -hmm. What was it like working with her? Amazing. Julie is... I have such a tremendous amount of respect for Julie and her craft. She is just to work with her... Um, she's, she's very, very professional. She's very committed to the craft. Um, she's so easy to flesh things out. And, uh, you know, we talked about building backstories and really the dynamics of the characters of, of, you know, because as much as you love a sibling, there's always all the sibling rivalry things that go on that take place. And th there's issues with siblings. There just is in any family. But a very strong uh, core of, of love and respect um, between both sisters, but she was just, it was amazing. And we had a gas. I mean, she's got a wicked sense of humor, so. <laughs> Billy's got nothing on her. <laughs> now, have you, you know, you have, a, if you go to your IMDb page, there are zillions of credits. Have you done any other production work as a producer? No, I, I had been offered, um, I had a number of opportunities to step in to the, to the shoes of producing, and nothing ever felt right. It just, at the timing for whatever reasons, wherever I was in my personal life with raising children, being a single mom, other, other shows that I was working on, you know, the time element of what you can actually dedicate yourself to or commit yourself to. It just, and nothing struck me the way that this particular script and what Tyler had written and created. Um, I, I was just blown away by the script when I read it. And, and then in meeting Tyler uh, for the first time, I felt that I had, melt, had met sort of a counterpart to myself and that somebody in this, in this land of foreign language was speaking my language. And right. I could hear it clearly and it was concise. And um, I, I was just, I just said, I really have to do this. And, and of course there was a certain amount of trepidation on my part because I'd never done it before. I'm very comfortable being in front of a camera. Mm -hmm you know, give me six pages of monologue and I can memorize that and, 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 and be very comfortable with that, but put me behind the camera and have to approach actors or, you know, camera people or ADs and, and have a very, you know, candid conversation about, you know, what we think we need to achieve in this. Um, it was a sharp learning curve, but, um, but one I feel very comfortable doing. Would, would you compare this show to anything maybe we've seen in the past or... Uh, that's a, that's a really difficult question. Nothing currently. I uh, you know, as Tyler had mentioned, that he had worked with producers that had done the film Crash, which is really one of my favorite films. It's it's up there in probably my top twenty favorite films. Um, so the idea of storyline really intersecting um, in a very realistic manner. That film was so gritty, and that you just it was just palatable when you were watching it. And I feel that that's what our series is uh, going to create as well, has created and will continue um, as it evolves to create, I think, in an in a, in a even, even greater capacity. But no, not offhand anything on, on television. I'm sure if I sat down and sort of, but I don't even like doing that because I think that we're really, really taking a bold step in shedding light onto issues that a lot of shows don't really want to go near. 
right. you know, what's socially acceptable, what's going to be okay. Um, we need to stay on this side of the line, you know, don't, you know, don't step over this line because, uh oh, people are getting uncomfortable if you're going to, if you're going to hold a mirror up to them and they're going to have to look at it and say, oh my gosh, that's what we want to do because there are people out there suffering. They're suffering. And they, there are real hard-hitting life issues. I love that Catherine Zeta-Jones just made it okay to suffer from being bipolar. I have a lot of friends that deal with that issue. And don't let the other you know, parents at school know about it, that I have to take medication for this issue, because there will be a stipulation that's attached to it. We need to blow the doors off of that. Right. We need to make a difference. That's what we want to do. We want to make a difference. There are children out there being abused. There are people suffering from drug and alcohol addiction. And, and not because that's what they want. It's because they don't know how to get out of that cycle. You know, we, we've learned that people are, are genetically predisposed based on where they come from and, and what their genetic makeup is. It's, it's not a sin. I don't think that you would chastise somebody if they were suffering from cancer or diabetes. Addiction is the same thing, drug or alcohol. And that has been proven by the medical association. So um, let's change things. Let's stir things up. Let's help people get into a solution when there's a problem. And I'm very passionate about that because I'm at a place in my life that I've done a lot in my life. I've traveled. I've been in magazines. I've been on primetime television. I've done all of that. And, and when I was younger, those things sort of defined who I was. That doesn't define me today. What defines me today is how can I make a difference in my community and, and in, in, in our society? Can I change the course of one person's life in some small way that instead of going left, they may go right, that enables them to live a better life? That's so important to me today, to give something back. And I know Tyler feels the same way, so. Wow. That's, that's sort of what we're aiming for, yeah. and at the same time mm -hmm. to entertain, yeah. you know, because I think if you try and force feed something down people's throats, um, they might turn and walk away from that. So just to really to, um, to try and make a difference is, is, is so important. So the daytime landscape has changed a lot since you first mm -hmm. appeared on, on the daytime soap. Um, and recently, All My Children and One Life to Live are canceled. They're going to be off the air in the next year. Uh, this seems like a great opportunity for fans to continue following the stars that they loved onto a new medium. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Tyler and I feel very strongly about the fact, where are the fans going to go? What are they going to turn to? The soaps have systematically, you know, they're, they're disappearing off of, off of television. And so we feel that we have created this this perfect venue, this series that is going to allow the fans to find a new home. Um, the cast will be evolving and growing uh, as we move into second season. We have our set cast, our core that will be um, the families that will always be in place. Um, and we, as we said, we hope to extend that as well. Um, and because a number of the stopes have ended, there's certain actors who will shall remain unnamed, that we've started discussing, we feel that might be a really good fit for what we're doing as well. Because we want the fans to have a place to go, it's so important. Um, and we've got some great newcomers as well, Matt McAbee and um, a wonderful little star by the name of Isabella Nolan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we've got some really good new people coming in as well that I think that the, uh, that the, that the soap fans are gonna be really excited about. We love, we wanna hear from people. We wanna hear from you on Facebook, Twitter, on the website, you know, all of, all of this is so important to us. We want your feedback. We want to hear your voice. And if people are, have a voice and make their voice known, we're going we're to be there. We're going we're gonna to stay in place. So.